Hello fellow gardeners, welcome to Soil Secret Studio. If you've ever spent months managing a compost pile only to end up with something underwhelming, today's video will change how you think about soil building. We're going to explore why a simple fallen log on your property is actually a far superior soil builder than the bin you've been carefully tending. Understanding this principle will transform your entire gardening approach. Let's face it, most backyard compost piles disappoint us. We layer greens and browns, turn them religiously, monitor moisture, balance carbon and nitrogen ratios, and wait anxiously for finished compost. The promise is seductive, but the reality is inconsistent results. The fundamental problem is that backyard composting prioritizes speed over quality. We force rapid decomposition through heat, constant oxygen introduction, and careful ingredient balancing. This creates finished compost quickly, but at a cost. During this rapid breakdown, nutrients get lost. Water leaches away, carrying soluble minerals with it. Ammonia gas escapes into the air. Now consider a fallen log in the forest. Nobody manages it, nobody turns it. Nobody calculates its carbon-nitrogen ratio. Yet this log feeds the soil around it for years, supporting an incredibly complex ecosystem while building some of the richest soil on Earth. This isn't magic. It's a fundamentally different and vastly more efficient biological process. What's actually happening inside a decomposing log is extraordinary. The log isn't simply rotting, it's becoming a thriving ecosystem of specialized organisms. Wood contains cellulose and lignin, complex polymers that few organisms can digest. This is precisely why logs take years to decompose, not weeks. And this slowness is where the real magic happens. Wood decomposing fungi are, really, the key players here. These specialized organisms produce enzymes that cleave the bonds in lignin molecules, essentially eating their way through solid wood. This fungal activity creates vast networks of mycelium threads that extend throughout the log and, you know, into the surrounding soil. These networks form mycorrhizal relationships with plant roots, extending the plant's reach underground and giving it access to water and nutrients locked in soil pores that roots alone could never reach. Inside the log, bacteria work alongside fungi cycling nitrogen and other elements into plant-available forms. Insects, beetles, millipedes, springtails, colonize the log creating galleries that increase oxygen penetration and provide habitat for more microorganisms. Each organism produces waste that, well, feeds others in an intricate self-regulating food web. Nothing is wasted. This biological complexity is almost entirely absent in typical backyard compost piles. While compost contains bacteria and fungi, they're usually dominated by fast-growing, heat-loving microbes that burn through materials quickly without establishing the sophisticated fungal networks that logs develop. The result is compost lacking the mycorrhizal infrastructure necessary for long-term, effective soil building. Backyard compost piles require constant attention because they fight against natural biological processes. To decompose quickly, a pile must heat to between 130 and 160 degrees Fahrenheit through intense microbial activity. This heat kills beneficial organisms you'd want in soil, particularly mycorrhizal fungi, which cannot survive those temperatures. It also causes volatile compounds to escape into the air, which is, well, why piles smell like ammonia? You're literally watching nutrients escape. Maintaining a compost pile demands constant effort. You must turn it to introduce oxygen and prevent anaerobic pockets from forming and creating odours. You must manage moisture carefully. Too dry and decomposition stalls. Too wet and the pile becomes compacted and smelly. 
you must balance carbon and nitrogen inputs. Most gardeners eventually give up because the variables are simply too many to manage consistently. A fallen log on the forest floor is entirely self-regulating. Rainfall provides moisture without measurement. Oxygen diffuses naturally without turning. The carbon-nitrogen ratio is what it is, extremely high in carbon, but specialized fungi don't require balanced ratios like fast-acting thermophilic bacteria do. Decomposition proceeds at its own pace, and nature continuously adjusts the process to match conditions. There's no smell, no turning required, and no possibility of getting the formula wrong. Here's the critical insight. A backyard compost pile produces finished product in three to six months, but a log decomposes over years or decades. This extended timeline is not a flaw. It's the entire point. A log acts like a battery, slowly releasing nutrients into soil year after year. As fungi and bacteria work through it, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium and trace minerals are released gradually in plant-available forms. The nutrient reservoir in the log ensures continuous supply. So, how do you apply this knowledge if you don't have large logs? The principle behind log decomposition can actually be implemented through practical strategies immediately available to you. The most direct approach is Hügelkultur, hill culture in German. You simply create raised beds and layer woody materials with compost and soil. As these materials decompose over years, they act exactly like fallen logs, slowly releasing nutrients while dramatically improving water retention. The wood absorbs water during rain and releases it during dry spells. Another approach is recognizing that not all organic waste needs to go in the compost bin. Larger branches, small logs and woody prunings can actually decompose in place in your garden beds. Yes, it takes longer, but the long-term benefits are substantial. You can also use wood chips as mulch. As they decompose, they suppress weeds, regulate soil moisture, buffer temperature fluctuations, and feed your soil biology while encouraging mycorrhizal fungi proliferation. The conclusion is clear. The forest floor operates according to principles fundamentally more effective than our human-managed systems. Slow, consistent nutrient cycling through fungi-dominated decomposition creates superior soil and more resilient plants than rapid bacteria-dominated composting. So, this doesn't mean abandoning composting entirely. It still serves a purpose for kitchen waste, of course. Rather, it's about rethinking your relationship with organic waste. Woody materials and logs, you know, should really be embraced as soil builders rather than just compost ingredients. Your garden beds should, ideally, incorporate woody decomposition at multiple scales, from hugel culture beds to mulch layers to in-place log placement. By integrating these natural decomposition principles into your gardening practice, you'll end up creating soil that's alive, resilient and, honestly, increasingly fertile each year. Take a moment to look at your garden differently. Instead of viewing fallen branches and logs as debris to remove, try seeing them as resources to integrate. Maybe start a hugel culture bed or, you know, mulch your existing beds with wood chips. Let your garden become a small version of the forest floor, where decay feeds fertility and time compounds every single benefit. If this resonates with you, why not subscribe to Soil Secret Studio and share this guide with fellow gardeners who are tired of fighting their compost piles. The forest really does have wisdom to teach us, and when we work with nature instead of against it, our gardens transform. See you in the next video. The